How's it going, YouTube? Welcome back to another YouTube video on Clock TV, otherwise known as the original Clock Channel. So as you guys may now know, I just moved to a new location, and it took only like a day to get all this set up. And I did the grand reveal quite recently, and then I have gotten several requests since then to do a video on this. I am bringing to you guys a full, in-depth tour of my entire clock collection. I'm going to explain about every single clock in my collection and showcase every single one. A lot of people have told me that it's better if I talk in some of my clock collection updates. So with all of this said, I am going to be bringing you guys a full update to my collection with information about every single clock in my collection. So with all of this said, I think we should go ahead and dive right into this update. So let's go. Oh yeah, and before I start the tour exactly, I thought I'd showcase this. This right here is a little photo th that a family member made for me. Supposedly, it could have been used for a new avatar because the person who made this for me thought that this could be my new avatar for the YouTube channel. But I've also heard some people say that my current avatar, it just brings a lot of nostalgia to them. But I thought I'd showcase this anyways because this is a really nice logo. And it makes perfect sense for a TV and a clock to be in there. I thought I'd show that off first and I hope you guys actually like that. So I think to begin, I, we will go ahead and start with the entryway section at least, because the entryway is right here. I have one shelf on the left with a ton of my smaller mantle clocks on it, including the uh, that one, which I'll get into detail a little later into the video. But let's go ahead and get started with this side. So, of course, we're going to start off with the probably the biggest clock in my collection. This is a Colonial Triple Chime Grandfather Clock. Now, there's quite a bit of history in regards to this clock because a friend of mine rescued this from a landfill, which he actually works for, and he dropped it off at our place. And it was just covered in filth and grime. And it was just disgusting. But I cleaned it all up, oiled up the movement, got all the parts hung on. And now this thing is working just like it should. And the door, by the way, it was heavily damaged. But about two years ago, that was fixed. And as you can see, it's back on there now. And this clock just looks like new now. So yeah, quite a bit of history about how I got this clock. And this is actually the first grandfather clock that I ever got. And right beside it, this is an Emperor chain-driven Westminster Chime grandfather clock. I got this from a family member. They bought it at a yard sale for probably like $60. It wasn't working at all, but it had like all the parts to it. And if you may notice here, this weight has a replacement hook on it because it didn't even have a hook on it when I got it. So a friend of mine built and installed that hook on it as a replacement. And then I purchased a replacement suspension spring because that one was the old one was defective. And now this thing is just working like new and looks fantastic. So overall, another nice grandfather clock to have. All right, and now we're coming over to this shelf next to the grandfather clocks. Up on top, we have this Seth Thomas Tambor Westminster Chime Mantel Clock. Um, same story as the Colonial Grandfather Clock. This one was also rescued from a landfill and was given to me by the same person who gave me the Colonial Grandfather Clock. And as you probably guessed, this thing did not work when I got it. 
And so the movement, I totally replaced it. It's got a brand new movement in it and now it's working fantastic and sounds beautiful. Moving down one shelf, we have this little anniversary style clock. It does not work, unfortunately, and that piece came out. I need to get it put back in there. Here we have a glass sculpture of Big Ben, the most iconic clock tower. This is battery operated, but I haven't replaced the battery in it in a while. There's a good look at the dial. This is all glass, by the way, and it's beautiful. Here's another anniversary style clock. This one, unfortunately, is like totally broken. I tried taking it apart to work and fix it, but the whole thing just fell apart and now it's possible I may not get it up and running. Here we have a, if it'll focus, a little kitchen alarm clock, you could say. I think I got this from a family member like a couple years ago. Yeah, and it's pretty nice. And back here, we have a big old weather clock. This one is really cool. And that is not accurate because I think that the sensor is actually in the house right now. <laughs> no, it is not 69 degrees out. But 67 inside, however, that seems pretty accurate. Here we have a little skeleton clock. I got this from the owner of a jewelry store that I visited a couple years ago. And it's really nice looking. If it'll focus, sorry about that. You can get a good look at the gears right there. Very nice looking. Coming down to the next shelf, we have a Howard Miller battery operated clock right here. This actually is a little case and you can close it up like that. And it looks really nice and it works perfectly. Here we have just a basic quartz clock back here. I don't know if there's nothing, there's really not much special about it. Here we have a Holland themed clock. I think a family member gave this to me and it's beautiful. This is actually made of glass, I think, yeah. It's really nice looking. Here's a little thermometer, you could say. A giant thermometer, it even has humidity, a bar meter, and a temperature. This thing's really cool. Here we got a, a Cummins style clock here. Pretty nice looking. Here we have a totally glass, um, another Bulova quartz clock. It's a pretty reflective, although it looks pretty dirty. So I'll need to get it cleaned. Moving down, we have this big old pendulum clock in the back, which I need to get a new battery in it. Here we have a West Clocks alarm clock. I think I got this from uh, I can't remember who I got this from, but it does work, but it's just not wound up right now. Over here we have another West Clocks. This, I think, is a Big Ben uh, style one. It does work. I got this actually from the same person who got me the Colonial. How ironic is that? Yeah, that same guy also gave this to me. It does work, and it... Definitely has some wear to it, but it is pretty unique to have. Here we have this interesting thing, a world time clock with like five different battery mechanisms in it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? This is some sort of paper clock that I think one of my cousins made for me. I don't remember when I got that. And this is also a replica of a clock tower. It's got a real life bell in it, but it doesn't really make noise. And then here we have a little hourglass or more like minute glass, honestly. So yeah, it's pretty nice. And moving down, we have two cottage style clocks. 
This, these two clocks are actually new arrivals. I got these relatively recently last month. This one is currently does not work. So I need to get that fixed. It's very dusty inside too. And this one, it does work, but it runs very slow. Um, I tested it, it's just running really slow. So yeah, and also the glass panel right here is very loose. I need to get that fixed. And in the middle, we have another alarm clock. This is a Joe Boxer clock. This can actually be worn as a necklace. You can kind of see right there. You can hang it around your neck. So ain't that cool. <laughs> and then on the very bottom shelf, we have a Seth Thomas Mini Ogi mantle clock. I got this from an antique mall for like... Uh, maybe like $50 or something. It used to work, but it unfortunately doesn't anymore. But I can go ahead and demo the chime for you. Nice strike, that's for sure. Yeah, I wish this thing worked, though. This is a little fake cabinet which is supposed to be a clock. And I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it. This is where I keep most of my keys for some of my clocks. Ain't that cool? <laughs> That's pretty funny. And now we come over here to this shelf next to the tall black one. We're gonna start over here. We have this Big Ben lamp. I think I got this from my grandparents. It's very nice. And this is a new arrival. This is a another cottage clock. This one is actually mechanical. As you can see, it has a key. I just oiled the movement, and now this thing is working fantastic. So glad I was able to fix it. I don't know the brand of it, but I'm going to look into it. This is an Ingram gingerbread-style mantle clock. I got this from an antique mall in Nashville, Tennessee back in 2017. It did not have a key or a pendulum to it when I got it. I only paid for like $25 for this. That pendulum came off eBay, and then I bought this just to wind it, and also for some of my other clocks that don't have keys. Now this thing is working fantastic. May as well show the gong. That's what it sounds like. So this is overall a very nice mantle clock. Here we have a Rox Hall uh, time-only mechanical mantle clock. Got this for about $50 at an antique mall in Michigan. It's working really well, and it has a unique design to it. I think I can just let this speak for itself, honestly. There's a good look at the movement. Well, not really a good look, though. But this is still a really interesting clock. And moving down, we have this Jensen alarm clock slash radio. It does work. I just don't have it plugged in at the moment. This is something I think my grandparents gave to me. That's a little ornament for a Christmas tree. Moving over here, we have this Danbury Quartz Clock. Currently does not work, unfortunately, but it does look pretty nice. Here we have this Time Quartz Mantle Clock. I think my grandpa gave this to me. It's a really nice clock overall. Over here, this is a another Quartz Mantle Clock. I think my grandpa gave this to me as well. I like the design to it. It's pretty nice. Here we have a Washington DC themed clock. I went to Washington DC back in 2017 and I got this clock in the process. As you can see, it's got the US Capitol, the White House and the monument on it. This is overall a super nice clock. Moving over here, we have another West Clocks, Big Ben clock. Or at least I think this is West Clocks. I have no idea, though. I got that from Goodwill. It does work, but it's kind of finicky. 
This is another West Clocks, Baby Ben Clock. From what I've been told, this isn't even a West Clocks. At least, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I had a discussion with someone about this on Discord. And yeah, I don't know how to work it, honestly. I don't even know how to get it running. Here we have a Timex alarm clock. A friend of mine gave this to me. It's a pretty nice one. Moving over here, we have this interesting thing. You plug it in and turn it on, it'll display a lot of different messages, dates, times. It's pretty cool. Over here, we have two more lamps. They're both pretty nice. I think this one came from Goodwill. It does work. I just don't have them plugged in right now. And down here are all of my wristwatches. I do need to organize this a bit better. This is some sort of quartz pocket or watch. Sorry, why did I say pocket? <laughs> here, you know what? I'm going to turn on my video light. Okay, sorry about that. You, you all will probably see this a bit better. This is a quartz wristwatch. I don't remember where I got this. It's pretty nice, though. This is uh, another quartz one, it looks like. I can't remember who gave this to me. This is a, uh, if it'll focus, it is a carriage uh, watch. It's got a very tiny wristband. This is a Seiko automatic watch. It's pretty interesting overall. I think my grandpa gave this to me. Better look at it. And this here is a Geneva watch. It's got a lot of different uh, second hands on it. There's the back of it. Stainless steel movement was made in Japan. And the front's a little shattered. I can feel it with my finger. This right here is a Boeing themed watch. This is personally one of my favorite watches I have just because I love Boeing. <laughs> I got this actually from the Everett Payne Field in Washington State back in 2017 and it's a really nice watch. Easily my favorite. This here is a... Uh, Pretty generic looking watch. Obviously, it's a quartz. I don't know much about it. Here we have a very white uh, quartz watch. I think my sister gave this to me, actually. And over here, if it'll focus. There we go. These are my pocket watches. So this is a... Uh, if it'll focus. Please excuse that. This is a quartz pocket watch. I think my sister also gave this to me. This is a uh, this is a pretty antique pocket watch. It's bullseye. You know, this might look familiar because this seems like a pretty common watch in terms of antiques. I've seen it quite a bit. Pretty nice condition though. I don't think it works though. This here is a uh, Rocky Mountain National Park themed pocket watch. If I can figure out how to open it. Eh, I can't do this with one hand. Here we have an Isle Royal National Park themed watch. It's pretty small too, but it's really nice. This is a uh, Seiko, I guess you could say pocket watch, but it doesn't have a keychain on it. It is battery operated, I believe. This is also a spare alarm clock that I have. Nothing special about it. I got some more wristwatches over here. I have two Casio W201 watches here. Both are pretty damaged, though. Here we have another Geneva Japanese watch right here. Here we have a Casio watch. And as you can see, if it'll focus, it has a calculator on it. Ain't that cool? 
That's not something you see every day. See, this is the calculator. See that? It's got a calculator on it. That is just really cool. And I apologize for the terrible camera focus, but this is a watch it quartz. I think my grandpa also gave this to me. It's pretty vintage looking. And got a bunch of other miscellaneous watches here with beads and such. This is some sort of C9 watch right here. Except it looks like the battery ran out. I'll have to get that fixed. Yeah, that's a pretty decent watch collection. And up here above that white shelf, I have the giant black clock face, you could say. It's just missing the hands. And then, of course, we have the iconic Zodiac art wall clock that I got for Christmas last year. Perfect centerpiece for the entryway. It looks really nice. So now we come over to my Cuckoo Clocks display. I have seven mechanical ones and two battery operated. So let's go ahead and get right into this. Here we have a little miniature one. I think my uncle gave this to me. It's really cute, honestly. And above it, we have this Angelster battery operated Cuckoo Clock. It cuckoos and plays Westminster Chime. And it has the people ticking for every second, and that's a unique feature. Overall, a nice clock. Here we have some sort of cuckoo clock. I don't know very much about it. There's really no brand listed whatsoever on it. A friend of mine gave this to me to repair because this was not working at all. But I oiled up the movement and fixed it up, and now it's working really well. Here we have some some sort of cuckoo clock, which is roughly 66 years old, or 67. It has a Thorin's movement, it looks like, and it was made in Switzerland. Switzerland and Germany. I got this from my grandfather. As you can see, it doesn't have hands on it. Um, but I did fix up the movement, and it does run pretty well. Here we have a fairly new Regola 8-Day Cuckoo Clock. This is the newest Cuckoo Clock I've gotten. I got it about a year and a half ago. And it's in Prestine condition. Little to no wear whatsoever, and it works fantastic. Here we have some sort of Swiss clock with the Swiss musical movement in it. There's a good look at the identification. This one unfortunately does not work, but I can go ahead and demo the cuckoo because the reason I'm doing this is because I took out the music box in it once to see if I could potentially fix this clock, but I think that just made it worse because this is now going in an indefinite loop of cuckooing. <laughs> It just won't stop cuckooing. <laughs> it's driving me cuckoo. Here we have another cuckoo clock. This was pretty much the first one I ever got. I got it like way back in 2012. And it's working really strong, although the dancers do not work. But it's still a really nice clock and it's working fantastic. Here we have a wind-up time-only cuckoo clock. I got this from my grandma, I think. This is how it ticks. That just bounces up and down. And yes, the minute hand did break off because those hands apparently are really fragile. I think I might have was turning the hands. I might have put too much force on it, and it just broke off. I, yeah. And then down below it, we have one pretty similar, but way smaller. Pretty much same idea. Let's 
except you gotta bounce it pretty far down for it to get it to tick. All right, and now we're kind of starting to come into the main section of my museum. We're gonna start over here. This is a Skyscan atomic wall clock. This probably looks familiar because they sometimes use these clocks in a lot of public schools. So you may recognize this clock. And this clock is probably even more familiar because this one I think is the most common in public schools. And the cool thing is it has my name on it. This is a Primex wireless clock. Here we have a giant Sterling and Noble wall clock. Fills up this little space pretty well. This is a Arbor and Emery a pendulum clock. I got this for Christmas one year. It's a pretty nice one. This is probably one of the first clocks I ever owned. I've had this since I was super little. And I think it can just speak for itself. <laughs> it still works to this day. Pretty shocking, honestly. Here we have this giant Westchester Clockworks wall clock. I can't remember who I got this from, honestly. Here we have uh, some sort of Grand Air Express wall clock, or themed, rather. It is airplane themed, which I do like. And the movement is a replacement, by the way, because the old one did not work. So yeah. Here we have another Sterling and Noble wall clock. I think my grandma gave this to me. It's pretty finicky. I honestly have no clue if it works. I don't know if it does, honestly. And now we come into some more of the wind-up wall clocks. This is a Howard Miller Sandringham wall clock. I got this off eBay for about $180, and it's working fantastic. And the chime rods actually had to be replaced because... Um, one of them broke off unexpectedly. I have a video regarding this on my channel, so I will post a link to it in the description. This right here is probably one of my favorite clocks in my shop. This is a Howard Miller Westmont wall clock. This was an eBay purchase as well. I got this for a pretty sweet deal, only $335 in which MSRP is normally like 1500 But I was so lucky to get my hands on one of these because this is pretty much one of my favorite clocks in the shop. And beside it, we have another beautiful Howard Miller clock. This is the Jenison model. I got this from an antique mall for like $420. And yeah, this thing is beautiful, working really nicely. Overall, another one of my favorites. Coming over to this side now, we have this Shindawa hybrid quartz wall clock. My grandma also gave this to me. It's a pretty nicely designed one, honestly. This is a Texaco gasoline style clock. I think my grandpa actually gave this to me. This is actually made of glass, so it is pretty fragile and breakable. So you'd want to be careful hanging this on the wall if you get your hands on one of these. Below it, we have a giant Howard Miller Maglodin wall clock. It does have a pendulum. I just forgot to put it on before I hung it up, but I'll have to get to that shortly. The movement, by the way, is also a replacement because the old one was corroded and didn't work. But this is still a pretty nice clock. I also got this from my grandpa, by the way. Here we have a wooden wall clock. It is kind of cheap because as expected, this just this came from Walmart. I'll just get that right off the bat. I got this a few years ago at a Walmart. So kind of cheap, it is pretty finicky, not wanting to run all that much, but it looks like it's ticking right now. So that looks like a good sign. This was formerly one of my world time clocks, but I didn't have space for it with my new setup. So it's just sitting right here with my other big battery operated wall clocks. Here we have a Howard Miller wall clock. I forgot the name of this model. 
I'll need to find it once I get done recording. I got this from a friend of mine. It is missing the pendulum, though, so that's kind of sad. But I do like the overall design of this clock. Oh, and before I continue the wall clocks, I thought I'd show off that this is the case for a WML Gilbert Clock Company mantle clock. I took the movement and the dial off because I'm looking into the issue of it not working because it did break a little while ago and I can't seem to figure out how to get it fixed. So the case is just sitting here with the gong and such. Here we have a giant Seth Thomas weight-driven Ogie mantle clock. It's in pretty nice condition and I think I may have just fixed it because it's been running for like the past couple hours. I think it is back in beat and is ticking as it should. So this is looking like a good sign. This is overall a really nice clock and I'm glad I was able to potentially get it fixed because I think I just fixed it. This is another new arrival. I This is another quartz clock of some sort. You can kind of see though that the hands are really bent. So I'll need to get that fixed. I know very little about this. I do know that this is made of wood it looks like. But yeah, it looks like a pretty nice one. All right, now moving back up to the wall, we have this Korean eight-day ripoff of a Vienna regulator. At least that's what I think it is, because a lot of people are saying that this is not an actual Vienna regulator. Um, I got this from a clock convention that I went to in about four years ago. Only got it for like $40, and it's working really nicely. It's a pretty nice clock overall. Up here we have this Virtue, or I don't know how to pronounce that. I apologize. Uh, I got this from my grandpa. The movement in it is a replacement, by the way. So, because it was broken. And below it is a Howard Miller 613226 wall clock. I got this from a clock shop for about $150. And it's working really... It's working decent, but it occasionally stops for some reason. I think it's just out of beat, but the chime is really nice. This I know very little about, but this is a new arrival. I got it quite recently. It's some sort of battery operated wall clock, which apparently should have a pendulum, but I'm not sure if it does. And it looks like the hour hand is messed up. So I'll need to get look into that. This is still a decent clock. And below it, we have a Cassell 31 day wall clock. It's a pretty nice one. Although I think during transit to the new location, I think the suspension spring got messed up. So it currently is not working properly, but I'm gonna get it fixed soon, hopefully. But I may as well chime it for you guys. It's got a nice gong to it. Here we have this American Edition Electromechanical Wall Clock. I got this for Christmas last year. It's pretty nice looking. This is electromechanical, by the way, because you can hear it ticking, but it's actually battery operated. So it is electromechanical, which is pretty unique. Up here we have a West Clocks battery operated wall clock. There's not really much to say about it, honestly. This is a line lineal centennial wall clock with actually a moving train. Although it does not work, unfortunately. I think I got this from, someone shipped this to me randomly. I can't remember who it was, but it's a pretty nice clock overall. Below it, we have this Japanese regulator wall clock. Got this from an antique store for like $150. Working really nicely, despite how old it is. 
It's a nice looking clock, that's for sure. And then next to it, we have probably one of the most iconic clocks in my shop. This is a Howard Miller Shelbourne regulator. I got this off eBay for like $120. It works decently, but it occasionally stops for no reason. It could be out of beat, but there may be an issue with the movement that I need to get fixed. This is another schoolhouse regulator style clock. My cousin gave this to me. It does not have a pendulum or a key to it. So I need to find a replacement for that. And I'm not sure if you guys can read that, but if you happen to know what that logo is, feel free to put it down in the comments because I'm curious as to what the brand of this thing is. Here we have a Spoogel & Company 31-day wall clock. Got this from a clock shop for like $70. It's working really nicely. And it's in really good condition, almost no wear whatsoever. So yeah, pretty nice one right there. Here we have a homemade clock that I made, just with a piece of wood and a battery-operated movement in it. And then same thing with this one, although I printed out a clock face and painted the piece of wood black and then I uh, put some glue all over it and yeah, <laughs> I made that myself. And then here we have a Beatles clock. This is a pretty nice one overall. Like the overall design of it is just so unique. And the Beatles, I used to listen to them all the time. <laughs> I forgot to also show this, but I also have this octagon-shaped Westland Quartz wall clock. In my old house, I had this upstairs, but I decided to bring it to this new shop. I mean, it's decent, but I don't have much to say about it. All right, and now we're starting to come into my mantle clocks main display, pretty much. So starting off, we have this beautiful Howard Miller Joyce barrister-style mantel clock. This is a very rare model, and I managed to find this on eBay, so I decided to snag it while I could, and it was totally worth it. This thing works beautifully. It has a Keninger movement in it, and it's overall just gorgeous, and it's very rare. Next to it, we have this antique Sessions mantle clock. A friend of mine gave this to me. It was basically an er early in heritage because this person's mother had this clock in her house, but she decided to give it to me. And it's working really nicely. Next to it, I have this wooden quartz Westminster chime mantle clock. I got this from a thrift store for like $11. It's working, but it doesn't have a pendulum to it. This is a Jupiter 31-day Korean uh, mantle slash wall clock. I got this for free, actually, from an antique store because the person was interested in my hobby, and they decided to give this to me because it needed a bit of a tune-up. I seem to have fixed it originally, but when I moved to this new place, I think something happened to the suspension spring, and now it just won't run for very long. So I need to look into this, to be honest. But it's still a pretty nice clock overall. Here we have a Howard Miller Graham Bracket mantle clock. Got this from a clock shop, I think for like a hundred dollars, and it's beautiful, works perfectly, very nice clock overall. This is a Ridgeway bracket mantle clock. I got this from a friend of my grandma's. They had this clock in their house and they decided to hand it over to me. I recently had to replace the movement in it because the old one broke unexpectedly, but now this thing is working perfectly once again. This is a fairly new arrival. This is a Josh, Jock, or I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a Tempest Fugit bracket mantle clock. I got this from a clock repairman that I met recently, and he shipped it all the way back to my place. Beautiful clock, working fantastic. 
and a big thank you to this clock repairman for shipping this to me. This was quite expensive to purchase, but it was so worth it. And here we have the most iconic Howard Miller clock possibly, or one of the most iconic ones. This is the Thomas Tompion model. This was an eBay purchase. I got this for like $400. Yes, that's expensive, but it was so worth it. This thing is beautiful. And it's got a little logo right there that says USG. The original owner, I think, worked for USG. Here we have another one of the new carriage clocks that I got. It's working beautifully, just like the other one. And it's really nice. And then on top of it, I have a sharp alarm clock. All right, and coming down to the lower shelves, I have the amazing clock kit. This one came from the owner of a jewelry store that I went to, and it's nice. The bell might need some adjustment. And here is probably my most iconic clock in the shop. This is the rare HAC Westminster Chime Mantle Clock. This originally belonged to my great-grandmother, and we had it in our house for several years. I decided to take it down about a few years ago, I think. Can't remember when. But this clock, unfortunately, does not work. I wish I could get it fixed, but I'm not sure if I will ever be able to. Because the movement is so incredibly rare, I think, and parts for it are going to be hard to find. So, yeah, it's sad that this thing doesn't work. And here we have a Howard Miller Worthington. This is another one of my favorite clocks. This is one I've wanted for a while. I got this off eBay for like $250. And it's all around just a beautiful clock. And then over here, we have this Revere uh, Electric Westminster Chime Mantle Clock. My grandma got this for me for Christmas. It does not work though. I need to find a way to get the rotor fixed. But this is still a really nice clock overall. All right, and now we're moving up here to this top section of the wall, which I put some of my smaller battery operated clocks on. Please excuse the crappy camera movement, but this is very high up. So this is a snowman themed wall clock. It does have a little melody that it plays on the hour, but I don't have the batteries put in it. This is a Newhall Quartz bird clock. It does play bird chirps on the hour, but the battery thing is broken and I can't put a battery in it. This is a, a little homemade clock I made with a piece of wood. I decided to make it Boeing themed. <laughs> I don't know if it's that good, honestly, because of my handwriting. Here is a Cars-themed wall clock with my name on it. Someone gave this to me several years ago. So, big thank you to this anonymous person for it. And here we have a Calvin and Hobbes-themed wall clock. I got this for Christmas one year. I don't remember who gave it to me. Sorry about that, I had to come over to the other side of the airport, but here we have a mustache clock. <laughs> Pretty hilarious, honestly. I think I got this for Christmas once from one of my cousins. Here we have a basic quartz wall clock. Nothing special about this one. And coming over to this side, we have this one. This is a hand-built, well, not really hand-built, but it just comes in a kit, and you can put on a bunch of different pieces like this make it a pretty crazy looking clock. <laughs> Someone gave that to me, I don't remember who though. Here we have a Spartus a quartz wall clock, it's square. I don't remember who gave this to me, but there's really not, that, not much special about it. This is a really interesting clock I recently got. This is, some, this is a quartz clock, but the battery actually makes those gears move as you can see. It's pretty interesting to see that. I think someone gave this to me, yeah. They left it on my front, por front porch, ironically. <laughs> and then over here on this side of the wall, we have this giant 
Friends Hermley Bim Bam Wall Slash Shelf Clock. I got this from an antique store for like $70. Works really well. I guess I can go ahead and demo it. It is safe to turn back because it is a Hermley movement. And then down here we have this electric plug-in mantle clock. Um, a friend of mine gave this to me several years ago. It does work, but it's just not plugged in right now. And then over here, sitting on my computer desk, I have my two clocks that I built. The first one I built with a good, a good friend of mine from school. It's just a little quartz clock with a nice wood finish. This is actually a lid and it can come off, but I can't do it with just one hand. The dial is pretty nice overall. So this was a fun project to work on. I really think the end result turned out great. And this right here is my official mascot of this channel. I built this with a friend of mine. I purchased used parts off of eBay, such as a Keeninger movement, a Howard Miller dial, and some hands. And we built this case and just installed everything. Those screws are for the chime rods, which I also bought off eBay. And this clock just turned out amazing, and the end result was definitely worth it. This is a beautiful clock. I'm glad I was able to build it, and it definitely represents this channel very well. And then up here on the wall, this is like my little entry clock to welcome people to the museum. Because, welcome to my museum. <laughs> Fits perfectly with the entryway right there. All right, everyone. So that definitely was a lot of clocks to go through. And that was a lot of talking. And I'm honestly pretty worn out by it. <laughs> this just goes to show how many clocks I truly have. But this isn't a whole new space. So it's a big change for this channel. But with all of this said... I really hope you guys enjoyed this full tour of my brand new shop. I put a lot of work into this video and it took quite a lot of time to get all of the clips for it. And I really hope that you all liked this. So with all this said, that is going to conclude this video. I am excited for what's to come on this channel. And with that said, thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all in the next video. So from me and the brand new shop, bye everybody.